This year has been a challenge for everyone to uh, do virtual meetings. And I'm presenting this uh, more as my role as the chair, the outgoing chair of the Australian and New Zealand Pure User Group. Um, and I'm going to talk about how we have been doing virtual meetings for a number of years now and um, give some tips that probably a lot of you have picked up throughout the year with regards to either being a participant or being a, a leader of a user group in a virtual environment. So uh, who are we? As you can see, you probably all appreciate that Australia is a very large country, but uh, each of these dots represents an institution in our Australian and New Zealand Pure, group, Pure User Group. You can see there's 10 universities in Australia and two research institutes, one in Australia and one in New Zealand. And as well as being quite geographically diverse, Currently, we are across six different time zones. So uh, meeting is also a challenge to get a time that suits everybody. So we've been meeting by Zoom for more than three years. I was in Prague last year and talking to some other user group chairs, and I was really um, struck by the fact that several of the user groups in Europe were meeting face to face on, on quite a regular basis every few months. Um, and, and this was quite foreign to me because all I had experienced was our, our virtual user group meetings. Um, we do, however, have an annual conference in person, although we won't be having one this year. Um, and we have, um, at the instance of myself and some previous user group chairs, we've held some specialist online sessions. Uh, and this is to kind of, I guess, make some subgroups within our user group. So we've had people presenting on how they've used the awards management module, the student thesis module. Uh, we had a really great presentation this year about how to write and manage JIRA tickets and how to put in tags and search for JIRA tickets um, to really try and make things more effective there. And also uh, we've had one on pure testing and configurations in pure. So we also have a Google group for questions and communication. And uh, that's kind of, you know, used as, an, as another communication channel. So if you're the chair of a virtual meeting or a user group, um, I'd suggest creating a loose agenda. Ours kind of follows the same uh, pattern each month. We follow up on any issues that might have occurred in the previous meeting. So this might be if I've had to go back to Elsevier and ask them some questions or clarification, or if someone's kind of indicated that they uh, will get some more information on something, then we you know, if there's anything that I need to communicate, um, some announcements or news or information about an upcoming release, we'll talk about that. And then we have an open forum that um, is really for bugs and issues and questions. And this is where people from the user group community can bring up um, issues that they're having with the product, ask questions for other people. We've got quite a diverse range of customers. We've got customers who've had Pure for a large number of years and some very new customers who are still uh, onboarding. So this is a great chance to, to share knowledge. Um, we also have customers that are on a wide uh, variety of different releases. Um, some customers upgrade straight away and other customers upgrade at their own pace. So I'd also get you to encourage participants to have their video on and microphone off. And as the chair, if you don't know, you can turn people's microphones off in Zoom and I would really encourage you doing that, um, it, particularly if there's a lot of background noise. If you know people that have a particular interest or knowledge in a subject area and you're discussing that, invite them to speak um, by using their name. It's really important that people feel that they can contribute and some people are shy. So if you ask them to speak or give their opinion, they're much more likely to engage. Um, you can moderate who talks by naming people one at a time. So if multiple people say um, unmute or you see multiple people with their hands up, you can say, right, I'm going to go to Joe and then I'm going to go to Sandy. Also keep an eye on the chat functionality so that if someone perhaps uh, is in a position where they can't use their microphone, but they can type, you can make the points for them. And a couple of times this year, we've had to have some votes. We don't have them very often but I found the poll functionality of Zoom really helpful um, to gauge opinion and votes. And if you are the host of the Zoom meeting, that functionality, uh, like you can see that Zoom retains the results for you. So that's really helpful. 
as a participant. Um, so we all have to participate in these meetings and it can be really hard for the chair if you just get a blank faces and silence, which I have had in some meetings. Australian people who are on this call uh, will know this. So if you're a participant, try to have your video on and your microphone off if you can. Use the raise hand functionality in Zoom to indicate that you wish to talk. So uh, if you click on the participants, you can get a list of participants and there's a little raise hand button there. Even if you've got your video on, just stick your hand up um, or, or unmute yourself. Don't be afraid to contribute and don't be afraid to interrupt politely if you want to ask a question or make a point because it is a brave new world. Um, and if you, if you need to be heard, then don't be afraid to, to make your point. And use the chat function if you can't use your microphone or chat to another participant privately who does have a microphone um, asking them to raise your point. So that's about it from me, short and sweet. I'd just like to really thank uh, my director, Sian Wright, who encouraged me to take the Pure User Group Chair role and has been really supportive in uh, everything that I've done. Also, Graham Pearson um, from Elsevier, he's been a great friend, a great ally, and a great support in the chair role. I'd like to just give an honourable mention to uh, two previous chairs, Catherine Harris from Bond and Scott Yates from the University of Canberra. Unfortunately, both Catherine and Scott are no longer part of the Pure community. They've both moved on to other roles, but uh, Catherine particularly was instrumental in really getting us going as a user group and setting us up with, with a bit of structure. And um, I just tried to kind of take her lead and move it on from there. And uh, Dan Boydell from Elsevier, who's quite new, but um, has been a real help. And also everyone in the Australian and New Zealand Pure User Group, you've all been really engaged and supportive um, in my time as chair, and it's just a really great group to be part of. So thank you. Well, thank you so much, Tanya. And that's a great group for us also uh, to watch from the sideline at least. A few questions has come in here. Um, so what was, uh, what has been the most rewarding part of managing and participating in, in the user group? Are there any sort of favorite takeaway from it? I think the most rewarding part has just been really getting to know everybody and how different institutions are using their pure. I'm from a very large institution and we pretty much have the whole product. Whereas in our user group, we have quite a number of smaller institutions. We have groups that only use different parts of the product. We have people who have it managed in different areas of their institution. So it's, it's really been kind of getting to know people and um, getting to understand uh, the different use cases and, and the different issues that everyone has and, and trying to be a representative for that. I kind of joke that sometimes I take my Monash University hat off and I put my pure user group chair hat on and vice versa. Yeah. So another question here after the meetings, uh, do you have like a minutes of the meeting or summary made available? Uh, or do you sort of assign action points during the meetings uh, for what to do? Kind of. We have a shared um, Google Doc, which is which holds the agenda. And then after the meeting, I will kind of add um, some points to that agenda about kind of what happened with that agenda item. So kind of under the dot point from the agenda, I'll write, you know, a, a bit about the discussion or what was resolved. And then I'll just email that um, the link to that Google Doc to the user group to kind of remind them, you know, this is what we did in the meeting. Um, and if there's action items, they're highlighted in that document. I have a um, standard recording on all my Zoom meetings. So um, all the Zoom meetings from the user group are recorded. Um, I mostly have it to kind of, if I need to go back and remember what happened, but it is, it is very helpful. And if any of the user group ever want a recording, then I have it available for them. Yeah. So a final question here. I know that we are not uh, allowed to talk too much about what we're not able to do right now. So meet in person. But what does the meeting in person bring to you? Uh, is there anything you're going to like this year? Uh, yeah, there is. Together? I think mostly we're going to lack the uh, Elsevier presence. Generally, we've been very fortunate in Australia that when we have had our annual meetings, we've had really good representation from Elsevier, which is really appreciated. Um, 
And also this year being very close to this event, we are going to try and have a bit more of a discussion event rather than uh, talks and presentations. And that will be difficult to manage virtually, but I'm hoping um, that it can really work. And as Patrick said earlier, it's really the socialisation and the, the incidental conversations that you have that miss that are missing when you can't have an event in person. Yeah, so the coffee break talks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, from Elsevier uh, side, we just I would just want to say if we can't participate uh, face to face, we would love to do it online. So please, uh, if we can do anything, we would love to help. So thank you.